students already in lower classes you have learnt about geometry algebra you have learnt about arithmetic even statistics also you have learnt little bit in lower classes now in class 9 and 10 you are to learn something called trigonometry sometimes students are very scared whenever they heard about trigonometry because they think that it's very difficult but believe me just see the video you will find that it is not so hard as you are thinking so let's start our journey now first of all let me give you the idea what is trigonometry until unless you know the basics then you will find that subject very difficult okay fine so let me start as you can see here already i've written the word trigonometry here you just break this word into three parts one is try this gono i can break and i can break this part last part that is metri try you know tricycle tricycle means what when you are having three wheels triangle you know triangle three angles that means try means three this gono word gono word is derived from the word gonia or gonon that one no one can say with surety from which word it is derived some mathematicians say this is developed from the word gonon and some it is from gonia gonon means side gonia means angle so that part is clear third part is metri means measurement that means if i combine these three it is the measurement of three sided figure or three angle figure and all of you know you have must have guessed what is three sided figure or three angle figure that means we are dealing with one triangle it is the measurement of sides and angles of a triangle that's all after that since we have used the term angle what is an angle an angle is considered as the figure obtained by rotating a given ray in class 7 8 even in lower classes you have learnt about what is a ray ray means whenever you are drawing a line this side one arrow you have given and here no arrow that means this point is fixed and this part can be extended up to infinity if this one is rotated then you are going to get this is called initial ray this is called final ray then measure of an angle this is the measure of the angle it is the amount of rotation how much you have rotated this ray will give you the angle that means you now know what is an triangle what is a triangle you know and what is the meaning of the word angle after that you have to know another term which you have done in class 7 and 8 as ratio and proportion let me just revise what is ratio suppose if I say if I compare the height of two students you can compare if I say compare the temperature of two liquids you can compare but if I say can you compare the mass of one quantity with the temperature of another you will say bah it's possible no it's not possible to compare the mass and temperature you have to compare something which is similar you can compare two heights you can compare two weights you can compare two temperatures but one is temperature another is weight cannot be compared similarly here whenever we say ratio it is a comparison of two similar quantities similar quantities me suppose we have taken two lengths one is longer another is shorter i can say this is double of this one that is called ratio once we know this what is trigonometry angle and ratio now after knowing what is trigonometry what is an angle what is ratio we can start the next part that is the trigonometric ratios in case of a trigonometric ratio first of all we have to consider a right angle triangle in this triangle which is the right angle this angle b is right angle so once you have detected which is right angle the side opposite to this is, can be termed as hypotenuse here i am using the symbol h suppose you are viewing from this position you are the viewer then this is the base since this is the base i can write this symbol b and the side opposite to the angle is called perpendicular which is p this angle is called base angle generally we use the symbol theta Theta is nothing but it's a Greek alphabet. Greek alphabet, other Greek alphabets like phi, lambda, phi, these symbols also can be used, but generally we prefer to use theta. Since it is a variable, other variables easily you can use. Now, since here how many sides are there? One, two, three. We can take the ratio of this side by this side or this side by this side. You can take this by this or this by this. In this way, many ratios can be taken. 
Suppose I have started from the ratio AB by AC. AB by AC. What is AB here? AB is P perpendicular. And what is AC? AC is H. So this is one ratio you got. BC by AC. BC by AC. What is this? This is B and this is H. AB by BC. AB by BC. P by B. Once I have written these three, just writing the they are reciprocals. Here I written AB by BC. Here I am writing BC by AB. So it will be B by P. AC by BC opposite of this one. That is B by H. I can write here H by B. And AC by AB opposite of this one. It will be H by P. Once I have written this. These are called trigonometric ratios. And in trigonometry we use these ratios with a specific name. First one is P by H. P means perpendicular, H means hypotenuse. This one we write the name as sine theta. What I have written? Sine theta. Theta is the angle and sine is the name of the ratio. This one is written as cosine theta. If suppose it is phi, then you have to use sine of phi. Cosine theta. This one is called tangent theta. This one is called, this ratio is called cotangent theta. This one is called second theta. And last one is called cosecant, cosecant theta. So these are, what is sine theta? Sine theta is the ratio of perpendicular and hypotenuse in a right angle triangle. That's all. So there are six trigonometric ratios. First one sine, though it is sine, while writing we use only the first three sine, cos, cosine in short it is called cos, tangent, ten, cotangent is cot, second, sec, cosecant, if I use cos, first three, then this and this will be seen. So we use cosec. So we are having sine, cos, ten, cot, sec, cosec. These are the six trigonometric ratios. And just see here. Here it is P by H, here it is H by P. So they are opposite. Cosine N second, B by H, H by B opposite. Tangent P by B, B by P, they are opposite. Fine. So that means we are having these six trigonometric ratios. To know what is sine, what is cos, what is tan. Now, you know this P by H, H by B and these things are very much difficult to remember. I know all of you are thinking that how to remember so many ratios. Let me show you a trick. Trick is that you write one line first. Some people have curly brown hair turns permanently black. Now some of you are again confused. The in between mess why sir is writing all this thing. I am just going to show you one tricks by which you can remember this ratios in a very simple way. Now just see we have written sin theta is p by h. Is not it? So here just see sin theta is p by h. Just see some people have. That's why I have written this line. Next one is curly brown here. That's why Curly means cos base by hypotenuse. And last line is tan theta is P by B turns permanently black. Just so simply you can remember this. And once you know sine, cos and tan, just take the opposite. You can find this. There are other ways also to remember. Someone used to remember like this. Pandit, Badri, Prasad, Hua, Hua, Bole. There are many ways by which you can remember. But remember, these are only the tricks to remember. This is nothing to do with mathematics. Since you know this, you have know how to remember these ratios. Now, sine and cosec. Just because they are opposite, I can write here sine theta to be 1 by cosec theta. Just see here, sine theta is P by H, where cosec theta is H by P. So that, just because they are opposite, so here I can write sine theta is 1 by cosec. So these two already we have related. Next cos and sec, cos theta equals to 1 by sec theta.
okay cos and sec b by h h by b so we can write cos is 1 by sec tangent p by b or tangent b by p opposite so i can write tan theta equals to 1 by cot theta now using normal algebra i can write cos cosec theta here sin theta here so i can write here cosec theta to be 1 by sin theta sec theta equals to 1 by cos theta and cot theta to be 1 by tan theta i think clear this part next just see just because you are having tan theta is 1 by cot cot theta is 1 by tan these two i can write in another way suppose if i write here sin theta divided by cos theta what is sin theta from the tip that poem i told you some people have so i can write some people have cos theta is curly brown here so here it is p by h into h by b h h can be cancelled or nullified p by b what is p by b i think all of you have guessed p by b is turn permanent triplet so i can write tan theta so what i am getting sin theta divided by cos theta is tan theta that means from this i am getting after this i can write another relation as tan theta can you guess what i am going to write tan theta equals to sin by cos sin by cos and just because tan and cot are opposite so i can write cot theta equals to cos theta by sin theta so with this basic knowledge you can start our next section that is complementary angles i think it is clear so in trigonometry what you have seen first of all you have to remember what that you have to draw a right angle triangle once you have drawn a right angle triangle first you point out which one is hypotenuse which one is base which one is perpendicular and be careful if your triangle is like this and you are viewing from this position then this will be your base angle and this will be your base that means if this is the angle this is the base and if this is the angle this is the base fine and then sin cosine tangent cotangent secant cosecant you write and just see how they are related sin cosec opposite cosec opposite tan cot opposite clear i think that much is clear please go through the book try to understand this basic part and in the next section we are going to talk about complementary angles thank you